Now, if you would want to evaluate yeah. the the Sabbath in the 21st century, you would have to ask yourself the question, are we still in the same conflict? Do we still need order out of the chaos of life? Do we still need rest out of the unrest that exists in the universe, even in the 21st century? Yeah. Are we still on the journey? Hello and welcome to our channel, The Biblical Perspective. It's a YouTube channel designed to give Bible study to those who are eager to know, those who need, to, need a refresher, and those who just want to get into the Word of God for the first time. Pedro, our last study was entitled Rhythms of Rest, but this one is called um, Sabbath Rest. But before we go into it, could you pray for us, please? Let us pray. Thank you. Our Lord and our Father in heaven, we are grateful once more for the opportunity to study your word. We pray that as we do so, we remain under the lead of your Holy Spirit, who opens the minds and hearts of those who draw closer to you and allows them to understand. I pray that it may be the experience of us here and of those who will be listening and studying with us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Pedro, you know, God put in our head an organ called the brain, a wonderful organ. And this brain has the ability to store short term and long term memory. Unless we have a disease called Alzheimer's, which is a devastating disease or dementia, if we treat our brains correctly, it should function right. Um, but some people go through a lot of issues and problems and traumas and things, but that's another topic. But we're looking at the topic of Sabbath rest in light of the brain. And the reason why I use the brain as an, as an analogy is because I want to, you to answer me a question. Um, and the question is, is to do with the Ten Commandments and specifically the Fourth Commandment. Many have been intrigued by it as to why God has put this word in. Now this word is remember. So why does the fourth commandment uniquely begin with the word remember when all the other nine don't? I think this is a, an important and interesting question um, because you've just by it set aside that particular commandment. Yeah. Um, whether you did it intentionally or not. Um, you have shown that mm. there is a difference. This one begins with, we were talking about Exodus chapter 20, verse yes. 8. Yes, we which are. Which begins with, remember, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Yes. Now, to answer this question, you probably expect me to say something along the lines, it's for us not to forget, or it's for us to be sure that over time mm. we don't come to a place where we say it's not useful because that's the kind of thing we usually yes we do hear. Mm -hmm. but i'd like to give we you do. an answer that is set within the context of the giving yeah. of these ten commandments and particularly okay. the fourth one that begins with remember yeah yeah you see okay. You see, uh, what we need to understand is there are several reasons mm -hmm. that we can ourselves find for this theologically. Yeah. But textually, mm -hmm. there is a direct reason why it begins with that. Oh, really? Yes, because the text itself says, if you look at verses 10 and 11 of Exodus. Uh, Exodus chapter 20. So the, the text begins with remember. You know what? Let's read the whole thing. All right. Read from verse 8 to verse 11. But what I'm saying is the direct reason from God's perspective on why is inscribed mm -hmm. or inserted in verses 10 and 11. Okay. So what you want to read Exodus 20? From verse 10. You can read from verse 8. eight. Let's read the whole thing. Okay. Which is the fourth commandment. Okay. 
Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labour and do all thy work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, thy manservant nor thy maidservant nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. All right. Mm -hmm. So here is the the reason yeah. I'm talking okay. in verse 10 mm -hmm. and 11. Yeah. Did you get it? Mm -hmm. Can you quickly tell me what it is? The reason he says, remember. Right. He says, because he, um, oh, sorry, verse 10, you said. Verse, yeah, verse 10 and 11. That's the direct reason. Yeah, because he's saying, I'm asking you to remember it because it was given to you prior to you being in this position here. And he's saying. What, what the text says. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, the text is saying, but well, the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. And it says, in it thou shalt not do any work. Yeah. Thou nor thy son. So he's saying, because it's, well, it's my Sabbath. That, that's prior, verses 10 and 11. Oh, right. It says, in six days the Lord made the heaven, the earth, right. and the sea. He gives a direct reason. Yeah. And that reason, from God's perspective, let's set our minds on what is yeah. historically happening here. If you read in chapter 19, the beginning, verse 1 of chapter 19, okay. we have a chronological element that sets the scene. Yes. I say usually, when I study Exodus chapter mm. 20, that it should never be separated from chapter 19. Yeah. Otherwise, you, you lose the much of the, of the historical setting and yeah. context that would allow you to fully understand what is going on in chapter 20. 20. So the, verse, the first verse of chapter 19 is giving us, as I said, this chronological element to let us know where these people are yeah. geographically okay. and in time. Mm -hmm. Then God engages in a conversation with them. Mm -hmm. And these commandments that you've just read, mm -hmm. of which you just read the fourth in the chapter 20, the Eight. 20th chapter, Eight. is actually God speaking audibly with a loud voice That's right. from the mountain to the people, never happened before, yeah. a unique experience. Mm. Now, imagine God says, remember. Now, that word would have meant absolutely nothing to, to the children of Israel. So the setting is, he is speaking mm -hmm. to this particular group of people yeah. having come out of Egypt, now in the wilderness, receiving from him mm. instructions. Yeah. He is telling them, remember, because in Six days mm -hmm. I made the heavens and the earth. So he takes his mind, their minds, back to, to his initial work of creation. That's the reason Genesis, he gives Genesis, yeah. in, in, in Genesis 1, 31 yeah. and Genesis 2, 2, two to 3. Two to three. Yeah. So he takes their minds there, particularly historically, and he says, that's why I want you to remember. Mm -hmm. But there is another reason he says that. And I'm saying, without that practical reason, yeah. The children of Israel would have had no, no reason to actually remember, remember that anything. apart from yeah. what God has said. Mm. So what is that reason? The Bible has consigned for us yeah. the answer to this question. Okay. So if you don't mind, mm -hmm. I would want you to go now to Exodus chapter 16 oh. and you will read for me to begin with verses 3 to five. Okay. Chapter 16 of Exodus, verses 3 to 5. And again, I'm saying, what about without a practical experience, yeah. 
of the Sabbath, the children of Israel may not have understood mm. the context of this word remember, although God goes beyond that particular experience you were about to read now. Okay, and I think us. and I think it's interesting all that dialogue that you've just said, that discourse, is that they'd barely come out of Egypt. Yeah. So all this, as you've said, it's a new mindset that they have to enter into. Yeah, so we need to put that into context. Right, so let's see, three to five. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots, and when we did eat bread to the full. For ye have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they walk in my way or no. And it shall, pass, and it shall come to pass that on the sixth day, that they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. In our last study, we spoke about that, so I'm not going to repeat what we said in our last study. Mm -hmm. But I just want to point out, still trying to understand and answer the question, yeah. why would this particular commandment uniquely start with the word remember? remember? Mm -hmm. Now, here, mm -hmm. in chapter 16, yeah. there is a chronological order here. The children of Israel have not yet come to Sinai, which we find in 19, mm -hmm. verse 1. Wow. They are halfway. They are in the desert of Sin, mm -hmm. which is between Elim and Sinai, mm -hmm. says the word. Yeah. Now, you can check that in verse 1 of chapter 16. Yeah. So they haven't yet That's right. got to the place where they would hear this word that mm. says, remember. All right? You checking it. Is that okay? <laughs> yes, I am. All right. You want everybody to check with you? Yes. Would you want to go to verse 16, 1? And I will chapter read. 16, verse 1. And they took their journey from Elim. And all the congregation of the children of Israel came into the wilderness of Sin. All right. Which is between Elim and Sinai on the 15th day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt. So you're with me. And it's always good to check because you never know. Absolutely. This is important in what we we'll say. So yeah. they haven't reached the place where they could hear this word, remember. Yet, mm -hmm. they come across that sabbatical experience yeah. and as you read God says on the sixth day I'm gonna rain bread from heaven for you mm. on the sixth day yeah. which is the Sabbath I mean on the sixth day you will go and gather twice as much as usual because That's right. on the seventh day there would be nothing. nothing so they now this is the first time we hear about the corporate experience of Sabbath keeping yeah. within the context of the people of Israel. That's right. Not yet at Sinai. Sinai. That's right. So if you read now for me, verse 12. Okay. Please. I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel speak unto them, saying, At even ye shall eat flesh. And in the morning ye shall be filled with bread, and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God. Again, as we said in our last study, yeah. we have a combination here of two particular events mm -hmm. in the life of the children of Israel. The first one is God is miraculously going to rain bread. down bread from heaven mm -hmm. for them because they have nothing to eat. They are murmuring and they are about probably to do something bad, irreversible to brother Moses. Mm -hmm. Now, Moses is saying, look, the Lord has a solution for you. Mm -hmm. And in that solution is included the concept of Sabbath. This is a clever thing that God is doing right here. Because it's clever. Now, 
If you read verses 23 to 25 for me, please. And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord hath said, Tomorrow is a rest of the holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which ye bake today, and seethe that which ye, which ye seethe, and that which remaineth overlay up for you to be kept until the morning. And it came to pass that they went out, some of the people, on the seventh day, for to gather, and they found none. Okay. So, they are experiencing mm -hmm. two things in the same, at the same time here. The miraculous raining of bread right. for them every single day. Uh -huh. And if they leave it over, like we said in our last study, it gets spoiled, and worms, worms and infested, mm -hmm. and toxic. They yeah. can't have it. Yeah. But here, there is a miracle that is taking place in the context of that experience, which mm -hmm. is called Sabbath keeping. That's right. What Sabbath keeping? The keeping of the food during the Sabbath as in the fridge so that nothing happens. That's miraculous. It is. On the sixth day, they gather twice as much. That's On right. the seventh day, they found nothing. nothing. Yet the food preserved. that they gathered the day before preserved, is fully yeah. preserved Absolutely. and edible. So they are experiencing two things at the same time. The keeping of the seventh day corporately for the first time, but also the keeping of God keeping them yes through the miracle of the food that he will keep from spoiling on the seventh day are you with me I'm with you and also it proves that there's something special about this Sabbath day in that God not only said oh you will rest but also when you gather there's a miracle attached to it. So which means This is precisely what I'm saying. So outside so outside of this, even for us, there's a miracle attached to it. Let's not talk about us now because we're we'll gonna be look looking at, that. at the historical event okay. and what to happen. Because your question was Remember. why did he tell them from the top of the mountain? Remember, are yeah, you with me? Right. This is what we need to keep so it bring it in back. mind. Yeah. And I said without a practical experience, that would mean nothing. That's the practical experience we're looking at yeah. now. Mm -hmm. So now if you read verses 27 to 32 of the same chapter, please. Okay, and it came to pass that they went out, some of them, some of, some of the people on the seventh day, for together and they found none. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long refuse ye to keep my commandments and my laws? See for that the Lord hath given you the Sabbath, therefore he giveth you on the sixth day the bread of two days. Abide ye every man in his place, let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. You see, when God now says, <laughs> now, if you, yeah. if you look at verse, uh, uh, chapter 16, yeah. and you look at the chronological element, Mm -hmm. uh, in verse 1 of 16 of 16 yeah do you want me to read the first one um, you, you see that they came in the wilderness yeah they, they are halfway oh, so right. now on the third month if you read verse 1 of chapter 19 it That's says right. the on the third moon which is the third month or between the second and the third yeah. months of their journey this is taking place, this element. Okay. So, not long, as you pointed out earlier, yeah. after, mm. when God says, remember, mm -hmm. the whole like experience that. is fresh in their minds. Yeah. Which one? The experience of how God sustains them. Ab them. Absolutely. The, the remember of the Sabbath day is not just about the keeping of the day. It's what happens but it's, within it. It's also yeah. about the miracle of how God sustained them. If you were 
on at the foot of that mountain yeah. in Exodus 20 mm -hmm. and you heard remember what would have come back to your mind the same thing as what I've read there that so the manner was preserved historically speaking yeah. this is the weight of the remember difference yeah. from the other commandment that's right how god sustained them mm -hmm. how god delivered them from yeah. egypt how yeah. god delivered them from hunger that's right and how god gave them rest yeah. in the wilderness while sustaining them even if he had to produce a particular miracle mm -hmm. to do that so how can you then forget but it also but before you go on, yes. God does something mar marvelous when he goes on with the remember. He does not attach this experience to the reason to remember, but he attaches the reason of creation. Yes. You did. with me? Because it says in six. So he takes yeah. their minds, although they should remember that. He also. takes their mind to the real reason. Exodus 2, yeah. Genesis 1 1 and 2 yeah and it's interesting right because they had um, it said and it said in verse 24 and they that laid it up till the morning as Moses bade and it yeah. did not stink neither was there any worm therein so previous to that when they laid it up and they disobeyed God it, it spoiled and were and worms were in it. So they had that compare and contrast as to when you disobey God, this is what happens when you obey God, this is what happens and you will be sustained when you obey God. And when you don't obey him, you will not be sustained because of what you've chosen so, to so do. So that remembering is encompassing of a lot, lot of, of their lives, basically. Absolutely. And how God deals with them. And all of that is contained yeah. within the command of keeping the Sabbath holy. Absolutely. So thank you for that. That was a very, very good explanation. But Pedro, why really should we keep the Sabbath in the 21st century? If Because when I mentioned before about the miracle and the miracle for us as well, and you said to keep it in the context of what you was discussing. We're now in the 21st century, so why should we? This is where you need to see what God was doing. Okay. Um, when in Exodus 20, he did not just, although he, he, he hoped that they would think of the experience we've yeah. just spoken about. Mm -hmm. But in verses 10 and 11, he went right back to the reason yes, why he ultimately he wanted them to do that. And it had to do with what he did at creation. Mm -hmm. They were not there. They were not coming out mm -hmm. of Egypt. They were not in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Everything was perfect. So yeah. you're talking about something in God's mind that is universal and yeah. timeless. Okay. You with me? Mm -hmm. So timelessness reaches also 21st century. Now there is another reason for that. We touched on it earlier on in, that, in our previous studies. Mm -hmm. Is when you look at Sabbath yeah. from God's perspective, yeah. you're looking at a world that came into order out of chaos. Mm -hmm. You're looking at a world that came into rest out of unrest, mm. out of darkness, mm. out of a conflict between good and evil, because yeah. we know this is what is going on. Now, if you would want to evaluate yeah. the, the Sabbath in the 21st century, you would have to ask yourself the question, are we still in the same conflict? Do we still need older out of the chaos of life? Do we still need rest out of the unrest that exists in the universe, even in the 21st century? Yeah. Are we still on a journey from slavery mm. to freedom? Are we still on a journey to a promised land? God is he still in the business of delivering and bringing rest to people. Then the answer is very obvious. This commandment is timeless. Yes, it is. You with me? Mm -hmm. It is timeless. So in the 21st century, you need as much rest within the, the Sabbath experience mm. as these people back in the days of Moses would have needed. Okay. And let's, let's look at Exodus okay. uh, 31 verses 16 and 
15 and 16, and then Mark 2, verse 27, which you know. Mm -hmm. Just to answer this question. So Exodus 31. Mm -hmm. Verses 16 and 17. Oh, 16 and 17. I'm glad you repeated that because I would have gone somewhere else. So Exodus 31, 16 and 17 says, Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day, he rested and was refreshed. You see, while God is attaching this in the context of Exodus yeah. to the children of Israel, again, he goes back to a pre-Israel concept, yeah. which is what we find in Jesus' answer in Mark 2.27, which yeah. says, Sabbath was, was made not for Israel, but for man, which means generic. humanity. Yeah. If you look at um, Genesis 5, for instance, um, verse 2, or, or verse 4, I can't remember which one, it's one of those, okay. where the Bible says that both of them were called Adam. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about Adam and Eve, yeah. which is the word man here is, is generic. It defines yeah. the human family. So, That's right. So God, Jesus in Mark 2, 27, referring back, back to, to Genesis, Genesis five, according two. to the command of God himself in Exodus 20, mm. is going right to the root of humanity. Yeah. And that includes Israel and everybody else. Even the last person on Are earth. You with Even me? the last person on earth. So yeah. when when he says that will be yes. that will be um a covenant between me and the children of Israel for all their generations, yes, says, we can God. fully reconcile yes. the, the, the concept of Israel being included in humanity. And Absolutely. we can go further. If okay. you go to Galatians yeah. chapter Five. 6, verses 15 and 16, for me. So, Galatians 6. We have very little time. I'm yes, sorry to rush you. Galatians 6, verses 15 and 16. Galatians 6. We, we, we're trying to reconcile um, the, the, the Israel concept and the man concept. So Galatians 6, 15. And 16, please. And 16. Okay. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. But as many as walk according to this rule, peace be upon them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. Upon the Israel of, of God. God. So when we talk about Israel, we talk, we need to know that there are two ways of seeing yeah. things. There is the concept of Israel that transcends yeah. um, history transcend the, 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 the historical Israel. And okay. this is what Paul is mm. saying here. The Israel of God is whoever Absolutely. is in Christ That's Jesus. Right. So that means Christians mm -hmm. are included in the, in the concept yeah. of the Israel of God, referring to the historical okay. element Excellent. of that. Yeah. You're with me? Excellent. So 21st century, yeah. no problem, because Sabbath is before sin, Sabbath is also after sin, yeah. and Sabbath is for humanity and for the Israel of God. Okay, then. So how should we keep the Sabbath then? Uh, this is a long, this is a long, oh, so we have let, a, let, let me, let me just go quickly, with, quickly. Can you go to Luke chapter 13, verse uh, 14 to 16, please. Luke chapter 13, 14 to 16. And I would say we should keep it the same way Jesus took it and I'll leave it there. Okay. And he laid hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, there are six days in which men ought to work in them. Therefore, come and be healed and not on the Sabbath day. So Jesus chose to do most of his miracles of, of healing, that is deliverance 
on the Sabbath day. Why? When you ask me how we should keep it, mm -hmm. we should keep it like Jesus did. Thank you very much, Brother Pedro and viewers. I pray that you will join us again next week. Please like, share and subscribe and give us a thumbs up because it tells people that we're doing a wonderful job for the Lord and for you. So thank you and by God's grace, we will see you again next week for another wonderful biblical perspective. God bless and goodbye.